Hey everybody, Chris here from CSS Tricks. This like concept came to me, I don't know, maybe I saw it asked somewhere or something, but it was about how you draw a line in CSS. How do you draw just, let's call it a one pixel line, you know, just from A to B or from X to Y or whatever. So I thought maybe we'd just do it in a screen. Let's just think about it for five minutes, you know? How would we draw a line? Well, here's a way we could make a div. Let's, let's number them. Line one, here's one way to do it. So line one, we know a div is a block level element. So if we said it was one pixel tall and gave it a background of black, uh, we'd see a line, you know? Let's, uh, just so we can see this a little better, let's say that the body is only a max width of say 500 pixels and it's centered. Um, with the auto margins, right? That'll push it towards the middle. Hopefully you can see that one pixel line. We've did it, we've done a line. That's totally a legit way to make a line. A div is kind of semantically meaningless. There's no content in there that harms no one and it draws a one pixel line. That seems fine. If you were gonna put that between two paragraphs, let's say you're gonna do like, a lorem ipsum paragraph here. Oops, lorem ipsum paragraph. That didn't turn out how I wanted it to. P lorem. Um, because that line was like a separator between those things. Again, I think that's kind of fine, except for that there is an HTML element that's that's kind of for that, called a thematic break. So you'd put a line there in case you're like, I don't know, changing concepts a little bit, or it's a new section of content, but it doesn't really deserve a header tag. You know, if, it, if it's a new section of content that really changes themes, you probably should have a header tag, but uh, you don't always have to. So that's cool, let's, let, let's explore that. So if we had like line two here, the way to do those is the HR tag, which is, um, you know, it can be, it's self-closing, but you know, that doesn't matter in HTML5. So we have that straight line going across two, which you'd use as a thematic break. So if you do want some semantics there, um, you could do that. So let's see, to keep organized, line two. What, what's interesting about this is that it's kind of like two borders. I mean, I wonder if I can zoom in really close there. See, it's got like a bevel kind of thing going on. It's kind of an interesting look, but it also looks like, I don't know, it almost looks like a mistake or something when I see an unstyled HR. I don't know why exactly. How can we force it to do what we want? I wonder if height one pixel will work there too. Will it chop off the bottom? No, it won't. Not really, we have to go like border zero. Was that, will that make it disappear? Okay, yeah, those bevels happen from a border. So now we could go like height one pixel background black for sure, I would think it would allow us to do that. Same kind of outcome there. Or because it's are only built from borders anyway, we could say that the border is one, I don't know, border is zero and border what? Bottom is one pix solid black. It could be top or bottom and we'll get that kind of same result, that one pixel line, which is what we're shooting for here. Um, that's cool, which means that uh, if we'd make a third line, another way to do this is with border. So line three would meaning we don't have to use an HR, why don't we just use this? We don't even have to set a height because there's no content in there anyway and we get the, the line across, pretty nice. Um, I'd say a border is probably the, one of the most common ways to draw a line in CSS, uh, probably because it's adaptable to the content. You know, it's along the bottom no matter what. So if I had like some navigation in here of some links and they all, you know, whatever, A, B, C, D, E, they would all, the border would be along the bottom of them which is like a separator, you know, like this line here in CodePen, the separator between this header and this HTML element is probably drawn by a border. <laughs> uh, absolutely, I probably wouldn't make a special div just for that. So there's just borders, that's a way to do it. What's another way to draw a line? Let's see, uh, I'm trying to think it out. Uh, here's one, line four. Let's say this, you know, let's set a height on it to like pretend there's some content in it, right? Like just because I, d I don't want to actually put content there because I want you to see it like look like an empty element. So let's say it's 100 pixels tall. And for now, just so you can see the background, let's give it a background of like CCC or something. Now I want to draw a one pixel line. I can do it with this concept of hard stop gradients. Uh, at least that's what I call them. So let's override 
the background uh, with a background image. Let's call it a linear gradient. And the direction of that gradient will start at the top and go down. So we'll say two bottom. And now it needs two values. So if I typed red, green, that's going to go from red to green, right? But we can also adjust the position of these stops. Let's say that I want red to go 75% of the way before it goes to green. We have that kind of control, right? Or if I want red to go just five pixels down and then go green, that could work. So now if we do another stop at, let's say, let's see, how does this work again? <laughs> at one pixel past it. So that way from five to six, red will be the color. And let's get rid of green. Let's say we start at transparent. So nothing, transparent is a color. And then we move transparent also to the five pixel level. Then from red from five to six, but we could say that transparent also kicks in at six pixels. So now there's just this one pixel distance that makes it red. So if we did this, I'll plus command D to select the second one with the cursor, call it black, get rid of the background on it. We've drawn a one pixel line now, but we've done it with a background gradient. What's cool about that is we can position it with pixel values or percentage values anywhere inside uh, of an element, which is kind of cool. We could probably play then with rotating it and things too, because a gradient doesn't have to be, and I wonder if this will even work, 45 degrees? I'll barely be able to see it down there because it isn't repeated and stuff, but it, and then it's getting cut off by the 100 pixels. What if we made it 500 pixels tall? I'll be able to see. No, no, because it's I don't know, it's positioned in a, in a weird way. I guess we could, let's play with it and then there's repeating linear gradients and regular linear gradients, but let's just go background. It is already, the default is repeat, isn't it? So if we, what we'd have to do is make the background size more like 100 pixels, then the default repeating is gonna kick in. Yeah, anyway, why I was starting to play with that is because we're, we're only playing with horizontal lines so far, but when you say how to draw a line in CSS, maybe what you were imagining is that you could draw a line from any X coordinate, X, Y coordinate to any other X, Y coordinate. Like it doesn't have to be a straight vertical line or a straight horizontal line. Maybe you can draw it from any coordinate. And it's just a funny thing to know about CSS that it can't do that. There's no like, there's no like, you know, line or something that, that takes those four coordinates that you'd need to draw that and do that. It's just not something CSS can do, which is a little brain twisty, I think, because I don't know, you'd think a design language like CSS would offer design primitives like that. And it just doesn't really, you know, even the shapes that you can draw in CSS, you largely have to fake with like things like border radius and transforms and clipping paths and stuff. It's just not that kind of language. Now SVG is, so let's go there for a moment I think is there anything else I want to cover though I mean for one thing you know if you're trying to fake it kind of you could go like transform uh, rotate 45 degrees rotate 45 degrees and then you can kind of have like a line that's from <laughs> that's not necessarily vertical or horizontal, you can get a horizontal there by rotating things. Now, what is that coordinate exactly? Well, you'd have to do some literally geometric math to figure it out. It's not, that's not a coordinate that I've input here that I can control very easily. It's just spinning this line off the middle. Now, if I said like transform, transform origin top left, it's gonna have a different result. It's gonna rotate based on that corner. So it may be a little easier to calculate, but I still don't know exactly what that is. Or if I went top right, it's gonna rotate um, 45 degrees from that position. So now it's pointing somewhere different, negative 45 degrees should spin it down here. You know, I can still kind of draw lines that are one pixel wide from place to place with stuff like this, but it's not coordinate based. So interesting, and I could rotate any of these techniques, you know. So let's do another one, uh, you know, and I said CSS, so maybe we'll go there in a minute, but for now, let's just do an SVG element. Let's give ourselves a view box, kind of a classic view box of like 
from zero to a hundred. Now there is a line element in SVG. So let's just see, make sure that it's there and, and stuff. So SVG, let's put a border around it, like border one pick solid red or something. So we can see, did it render? Yeah, it rendered a big old square because it doesn't have, like it wouldn't be a square if we didn't have this view box on it. It would be like 300 by 150 or whatever, that weird default size of SVG. But because it has a view box and the width isn't otherwise set, it goes to an aspect ratio, full width with aspect ratio. That's nice, I think we can use that. So there's four coordinates in a line, I believe. It's x1, y1, and x2, y2. Makes sense, right? Two, two, two coordinates for the thing. So if this was at like 10, 10, 10, 10, and I, I do think we're gonna have to apply a stroke to it to see anything at all too and this was at like 50, 50, that, that falls within the view box coordinates. Now there's a line there, but you won't see it because I think we need to make it have a stroke. I think stroke is just the color, right? Yeah, oh, there it is. And then stroke width, um, it's probably already one, right? What if we made it two, it's gonna get thicker? Yeah, four, thicker. And I think if we give it a pixel value, it's gonna kind of ignore that. It's kind of like a one. Um, how do you make it exactly one pixel? I kind of forget. I think there's something called like vector effect, non-scaling stroke. I wonder if that is an all it takes. Yeah, there it is. So now it's one pixel, just in case you wanted it to be like that and not scale like SVG scales. This gives us the opportunity to do coordinate based drawing of lines, you know? So we, it's not like we need to have this red border around it, but this gives us the opportunity to like draw something from here to here, you know? And there's a little more control over that, which I like. So that's a way you can draw a line in SVG, but I, you know, I said, how do you draw a line in CSS? So I think there's a thing called like a SVG to background CSS thing by Yoxel, right? Hopefully that comes up. Nice. So if you have this chunk of SVG and you want to use it, not as inline SVG as we have it here, but in CSS, meaning as a background image, um, you can do that. So I'll paste it in there. It gives me this ready for CSS version here. And there's the same line we drew. That's cool. Let's try to do it. So line five uh, is going to have that SVG background. So line five, we'll paste that in there and let's see how we do. Now it's going to be, it doesn't have any content in it. So we'll probably have to give it some height in order to see anything. And then there it is. How interesting, you know, but it's kind of along the bottom and stuff. There's some <laughs> sizing, certainly some sizing weirdness that's going to get um, tricky when you're do working in this way, but it's certainly doable. I was just trying to make a point anyway. So let's see if, let's see if we make it from zero, zero. I wonder if we'll be able to even see it because SVG has that weird cutoff thing from to a hundred zero, that should be a straight horizontal line across. Yeah, and you see how it's like, it's kind of like half a pixel wide. Hopefully you can even see it. It's cause like SVG strokes kind of like straddle the line and and then so half of it is gonna be outside of the SVG. I wonder if, I wonder if all it takes is to do like overflow visible. Will it take in that way? I think I have to do single quotes to make it work in CSS like that. No, it doesn't want it there. I wonder if, and this should have default overflow visible. There's something weird about that. I think I might just kick it down to one, oops, to one on the Y axis and then it won't cut off halfway. That's a little silly trick that you might have to do, but just the nature of, 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 of SVG. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't do that probably unless I was doing something a lot more interesting with SVG, like a little row of ducks or something that could benefit from having a path element, but just to draw a line, that's probably overkill. Now there's certainly canvas too, also not a CSS thing, but canvas has drawing primitives that would allow me to draw a line from with my pen of a certain color from one coordinate to another coordinate. So that's another possibility, but there is no background canvas canvas really in CSS. So if we're scoping this to CSS, that's not really going to work as a thing. Now, is there any more things that we didn't cover? 
you know, if you have ideas of how to draw a line CSS that I missed in this video, please write in. That would be cool. I think I covered it. You know, let's not drag this out. There's there's five different lines in CSS. Just, you know, I guess one of the reasons that attracted me to try to do a cheesy little video like this is that there's always multiple ways to do things in CSS. There's always multiple, you know, it's like, how do you want to lay out a page? Well, there's this way and this way and that way and this way. And, for some reason, like that might detract some people from CSS. Like, oh, why can't you just have the one way to do things? I don't want to think of five different ways. I kind of like that there's multiple ways to do it because there's always nuance between them. It's not like the end result is absolutely exactly the same in all these cases. There's reasons why you would reach for these different ones. And the more you know, the wider your arsenal is and the better CSS developer I think you'll be. So good luck. See ya.